section, we'll talk about data table joins and spatial joins within ArcGIS. Following this, data, this slide set, then we'll talk about spatial data formats, geodatabases, and calculating geometry. So first of all, a brief review on table joins. Table joins put two tables together on the fly, meaning it's something that you do on a temporary basis in order to make one table. This is not a permanent uh, editing change in terms of making a table, but it's on the fly, so it's temporary. A one-to-one -one join, for example, where a state attribute data table is joined to, to a state shapefile by state name is one example. You may also do a one-to-many join, where you join a code table to feature attribute table to add code description. Many records may be used in the same code value in the second example. We'll see much more detailed examples in order to explain these concepts. Each table in a join must have a key attribute for matching. This is also a unique identifier, so they must have the same values and data types in the key in both tables. By data type, we mean that you may have data that sometimes is text and sometimes is numeric, and they have to be the same type of data in order for that to work. There are also some other details that we'll talk about related to this in a few slides. So this is an example of a join, and it shows here that the SIC code has been joined for, to SIC code. And notice that in this case, we'll, we'll see in a moment that one of the problems with joins is that sometimes the data types are not the same between the two fields, between the two tables and the fields. In this case, they're the same, and they join no problem. So we went from having an attribute table that included information like the company name and the address, but it didn't have the description. We wanted the description, and so we joined it to the table that had the description, used SIC code as the identifier that was the common field, and then joined the two together. Note that although you need to have the same type of field, the number of features between the two, tab two tables does not actually have to match. You just need to have the common field identifiers to allow it to join together. There are some basic problems with joins. You'll encounter these frequently in Chapter 4. One of the most common is that the field types are different. So one is numeric and one is text. Notice that text values align on the left side of the column while numeric values align on the right side of the column. And it's not uncommon at all to find, for example, that if you have a CSV file, you'll have text data in it instead of numeric data, and it will need to be So the solution here is to create a new field of the same data type and use the field calculator to move the data into that new field. Notice that when you create the new field, you'll need to click the drop-down uh, selection choice for type and then choose the appropriate type. Just a couple of examples of common uses at this point that you should be aware of Short integer and long integer do not allow decimal points, but float does allow decimal point. A text type is exactly what it sounds like. It's a text, so you can't do any numerical calculations on, a, uh, on text data. And then uh, a date is a special date format within the, within the database. Then the next step is to use the field calculator to apply the data to your new field. The data type should match that of the field to which the table is being joined. And so the end result of this is that you'll have an additional field with the new type of data, and that type of data can then be connected to the, uh, to the field in which, it, which is. So now both tables are the same field types. So notice here both are numeric data when one was text and one was numeric before. One of the problems you may find with joins is that data format may vary especially when you're bringing in data from Excel spreadsheets, which may have all sorts of different conventions for entering data. Dashes, for example, are not recognized within the database format in ArcGIS, and they would need to be removed before you could join the data and bring it into ArcMap. Next, we'll look at spatial joins. So when you do a spatial join, you're using the shape and not the attribute field in order to join the data together. This enables data aggregation, such as counting or summing points by polygon. Common spatial joins are points to polygons to do counts, polygons to points to add text, and points to points to do distances. 
In this example, points to polygons, we might want to know how many businesses are in each neighborhood. Start with the business points and the neighborhood polygons. The business points would be in one data table and the neighborhood polygons would be in another. Neighborhood polygons might be the same thing as census tracts, and I think it is in the case of this map. So you would right click neighborhoods in the table of contents and then select joins and relates and join. You join data from another layer based on spatial location. In this case then, choosing the layer to join to this layer or load spatial data from a disk. And so in the case here that you've selected ArcEng City, which is architectural engineering firms in the city, you are joining points to polygons. And so then each polygon will be given a summary of the numeric attributes of the points that fall inside it. Make sure that radio button is selected. Make sure you're keeping track of where the data is being saved in point three, which is where the output will go. The result of the join will be served in, saved in a new layer. Specify the output shapefile or feature class for this new layer. The new polygon layer with a count of points, and in this case, the number of architects and techs and engineers. And there it is in the spatial join, the join tables. Then the result allows you to create a choropleth map from uh, data that initially started out as just point data. You've now joined it to polygon data and the result can be mapped out using a choropleth method. Another option is to look at points to polygons. So what neighborhood is a business in? In this case, we start with business points and neighborhood polygons, same as before. This time, though, you're joining data from another layer based on spatial location by right-clicking business points. So right-click business points, joins and relates, and join. Choose the layer to join to this layer or load spatial data, and that would be, in this case, neighborhoods. And select each point will be given all the attributes of the polygon that it falls inside. Be sure you're aware of where you're saving it, and the result looks like this. In this point now, we have a result that shows us the point shape file with neighborhood data on each of the businesses. The next choice is to go points to points in order to address a question like this one. How close is the nearest bus stop to a business? Start with business points and bus stop points. Right-click business points, joins and relates, and then click join. Be sure that you're choosing the layer to join to this layer, and that one would be bus stop selection. Then select the bottom radio button. Each point will be given all the attributes of the point in the layer being joined that is closest to it. And so the data will then show up in your attribute table. Be sure you're aware of where you're saving your output. The result would look like this. The distance field is added to the new layer of businesses and stops joined.